Hi there! Welcome to Adobe Life. My name is Julia Masalska and I'm joined here with the wonderful Mercedes Bazan. Hello! Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're continuing on our series from yesterday and we're super super excited to be working on some editorial design and Mechi already has done such an amazing job yesterday and today we're going to continue whatever she's been working on and uh, it's a brochure. Mechi, do you want to quickly say what, what you're going to be working on today? Yeah, so today we are gonna uh, be finishing the brochure and then going through some technical thingies uh, that are very useful while preparing files to send to printer. Awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you're gonna come up with. Let's quickly jump onto my screen and let's um, talk about the daily creative challenge and the wonderful presentation that uh, Paul Trani just gave to you guys. You guys can uh, can uh, submit your challenges and we're going to be reviewing them in only um, in only 90, 90 minutes. So uh, let's talk about that and let's show real quick how we are going to be doing that and where. Okay, let's see, Am I? can you guys see my screen already? Because, okay, good, perfect. All right, so the Daily Creative Challenge page you can find on behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. And this is where you can basically take part in it. And Mechi and I are going to take a look at that in about 85 minutes. Today is all about typography, find, incorporate, and manipulate type to make a, a Chip Kid inspired book cover. Super, super cool. And then you will also find the link to our Discord channel where you can submit your Daily Creative Challenge under the challenge hashtag right here and then later on we're going to take a look at what you guys are have been working on even if it's a work in progress still make sure to submit get some feedback from us so now um let's take a quick look at mechi's instagram so if you guys want to follow her as you can see she's really really talented designer she's really amazing illustrator and uh, graphic designer working for stripe currently so make sure to check out her profile it's mechi buzz and of course feel free to follow me on instagram if you haven't yet it's julia masalska and i'm sharing a lot of like small tips and tricks i also have a youtube channel so it might be interesting for you guys also to participate all right mechi let's get started let's jump in back into your screen and let's see what you're going to be working on today and let's take a quick look also at what we have done yesterday yes okay so yesterday we kick off the project and basically every project should start at least with a little mood board so we did that and then we grab our little color palette we choose some typography type typefaces <laughs> and the most important thing we created this um the skeleton this wireframe that will help us to develop our for sure and yeah just gives a little overall and overview of the whole thing all together um but it's also some illustrations but i'm gonna show them in my indesign so super fun illustration yeah. like look at that it looks so fun i would totally go to this festival oh. it's so awesome thank you <laughs> um this is actually let's do that um so yeah so we played a little bit with shapes i'm gonna grab I'm gonna do this because I really want the account. Um, so yeah, we play with shapes and with the, this crazy typeface, <laughs> and yeah. um, we create this uh, cover, then a little intro about the festival, and a very simple schedule for for it. Um, after that, we started illustrating some fruits that are very straightforward to illustrate <laughs> so yes these are very simple illustrations i invite you all to actually like start practicing with this 
um, some tropical smoothie recipe, which is very simple. And then um, yesterday I was trying a little bit about like how this could also apply this, uh, like this design could also apply to uh, a wine section. And oh, yeah, it's awesome. Uh, it's very simple. The leaves are uh, just, you know, you can see. <laughs> they're, <laughs> not, they're not super perfect, but uh, this, the grapes are just circles. So, and this little spiral is super easy to do. I can show it here. Mechi is known for always showing those really cool tips and tricks, how to quickly make something really nice. So yeah, I love it. I always take away some some cool stuff from your streams. I <laughs> uh, thank you. You are so sweet. Um, so here in the line, uh, you keep it like you click and then you can the spiral tool and that's it. Literally, this is very simple. But if you want to make, oh my God. if you want to make more, you just with the arrow up and the arrow oh, down. Oh, kind of like the star, right? Where you can add more uh, edges. Exactly. Can you show yes. that again? Yesterday. Yes. That's something completely new that I've learned. I was like, well, I was like so blown away. <laughs> I don't know if you guys knew, but if you just pull the star to the side, keep on holding it. And while holding it um, and pressing the up arrow, you will be able to add more edges to this uh, star, basically. Um, and if you make them less, then you will get into to a dry triangle even. So it's super cool. Exactly. I, um... I completely love that. Uh, yes, it, this is, I use it all the time. And this is like a grid also, if you add more, you can have more grids. And it's a very easy way to create grids, actually. So cool. those are the tricks, <laughs> the tricks I use all the time. Um, awesome. So following our, our skeleton here, now we should probably do a little poster-like, mm -hmm. um, typeface uh, illustration thingy so mm -hmm. let's do that this is this is just my cheat sheet on how the grids That's should awesome. work like and okay so let's get into this yeah and welcome everybody in the chat i haven't said hi to you guys yet we have Yay. kyle leo jd jotermia eva is here and ashrafu super cool to have you guys anthony just joined and leo and juhi good to see you guys and juhi is asking uh, did you do the wavy text and indesign or bring it from illustrator so the wavy text is actually a typeface called um i uh it was let me show you it was uh Ekerman Psych. Ek Ekman Psych. Ekman Psych <laughs> is available on Adobe Font. So if you go on to fonts.adobe.com, look for Ekman Psych and you will be able to activate it to your software. And then you will be able to use it in Illustrator, in InDesign, in Photoshop, in any Adobe software. So that's the cool thing. That's the cool part about it. Yeah. Yay. It's it's super cool. Does anyone in the chat have like any like a quote or something related to food that you would like to, to be featured in this little poster? Oh yeah, let us know. If you have any quote that is related to food, let us know in the chat. That would be awesome. Yes. And Starik and Vibhav are just joining us. Super cool. And Jonathan is, is asking, anyone feel like buying me an iPad? <laughs> Jonathan, I would love to, to be honest. I would love to. Yeah. If I have, if I had Apple sponsor me uh, for giveaways, I would totally do that. Oh yes, I think I need that too. <laughs> <laughs> you, don't, you don't have an iPad, Mechi? I do have. I am actually using it to um, read the comments here in the chat. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. <laughs> it's right here with me. Yeah, same right here. <laughs> yeah, iPad. An iPad is definitely very useful. Uh, Mechi, do you ever use the, the iPad for sketching for illustration? I think you do, right? Yes, I do. I do use the iPad whenever I have to sketch something really fast um, and I need to make like straight lines. Usually yeah. I do sketch on paper, but it's it's less tidy and it's a little bit messy. So if I have to present that to my team or something, I always try to a little bit clean up that little sketch in, in paper and use um, my iPad for that, but then I do illustration 
in general <laughs> with the iPod. <laughs> it's, it's That's amazing. cool. That's awesome. Yeah, it's it's great. It's a it's an investment, but you know, it's worth it. I think. So let's go until I until something comes up for the for the quote. Let's start doing the ramen section. Sim, sim, we have uh, Vipov suggesting simple is sweet. Um, and Jatimi is saying sleep is the second best thing in the world. Food is the first. Oh, I like that. And and Jatimi just made this up. So that's that's really cool. That's awesome. I, and Vipov is also suggesting I love you cherry much. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's so cool. That is, mm, I like that one too. Mm. <laughs> Because I want to, I want to illustrate a cherry. So <laughs> yeah, I can totally imagine the cherry uh, in inside this quote. Yeah, world. world. Let's. See. I'm gonna type this one just in case. Yeah. Because maybe we can just finish the brochure with this with this quote because I think it's amazing. Yeah, food is the first. There you go. I think you wrote in in the first. Is yes, is the first yeah, and then we also have simple sweet, and we have uh, I love you cherry much. <laughs> Let's go with Super I love you cool. cherry much. And Chris is joining us. Hi, good to see you. And Vudaval is also asking Mechi, how do you set up the grids for your projects? Um, depending on the project, so on Illustrator, Illustrator is just I would say. Uh, here color so on illustrator what i do is just make sure that i have at least a little border like here um this doesn't this doesn't have a lot of information so i guess it's fine if stuff are not and um, just a little bit floaty but if you have more information i will make sure to maybe just you know do a couple of um let me show you so sometimes this grid is a little bit complicated so i never use it but um i like throwing some of this here mm -hmm. and then so for that you have to have the um rulers activated right so yes. you go i think you go on to view and then um rulers show rulers or something like that oh yeah yes. rulers and then show rulers yes so yes. then you will have those rulers and once you click on the ruler you'll be able to pull down this one of these guide guides guides lines guidelines yes. um and those will be helpful to kind of give you uh, or help you align um layout right yes and um, lock green snap to green i i have like a little How do you, you how do you make this? You want to lock them? No, I want to unlock them. Unlock them. Yeah. Maybe command option in two. That's in Illustrator, but I'm not sure. Mm, I always use like this. Let me see. Maybe I can find it. <laughs> Help me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also InDesign, I think, is a little bit different. But let's take a quick look. But we are on Illustrator here, so. Oh, this is Illustrator. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so maybe um, Command Option and two. And try to. Oh, okay. Mm, that's that's interesting. Command uh, Control R here. Okay. No, that is for. Mm, okay. It's... Let's see. Usually, if you want to unlock something in Illustrator, you click. Um, Well, command into to lock it and option command ah, here, here. to unlock it. I found it. Okay, it is perfect. Shift, <laughs> just for the record for all uh, of us and myself is shift command and this one. Uh, and this one. <laughs> and, and, and this, I don't know how you say it. Um, <laughs> and this, and uh, this. Semicolon, something like that? Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. So when you have oh, it, what like, is it? I'm you, not even sure. <laughs> you know, Julie, I, I will always say up. yes, yes, but no, I'm not so sure either. Uh, okay my English uh, is yeah that's a semicolon semicolon yes semicolon. i just looked it up yeah google knows google, <laughs> google knows. <laughs> yeah yeah okay it so it's shift command and semicolon and we're yeah. good to go that's how you lock it and how you unlock it 
If Perfect. not, the, the help tool it all, can always be helpful. Um, so here, when I, what I do usually if I want to make a grid in Illustrator would be just pull some from, from the rule, ruler here, grab all of them, and then in the align section, just make sure that it aligns to the artboard. And then what you do is uh, do the vertical distribute center and then they will just snap, ah. you know. The same with so this it'll be one. be evenly distributed throughout your, your document, exactly. your artboard. Exactly. So if you Whoa. grab more, you do the same, but with the, the horizontal distribution and then... Uh -huh. Right, so... Oh, nice. So yeah. And then you mm -hmm. can also select all the guides and just lock them for the process, right? Exactly. If you go again to guides and lock guides, lock then guides. Okay. they are not okay. movable anymore. So this is Perfect. a way of creating guides. Um, I really like it. I mm -hmm. like it this way. And then on InDesign, it's you can either uh, create a new document when you create a new document. Um, let's see. Well, I think it's columns. You can do it. You can do it here in margins. But I always like just creating the default. And then when I see, I, th I think it's easier for me to see rather than like blindly start choosing numbers that don't make sense to me. So here, what you can do is uh, you can do document setup or a margins or whatever. And here you can tweak. So cool. um, that's can, awesome. That's really can, good to know. Yeah, if you this is for margins and stuff, but if you want to add more columns or, or remove columns, you go to the layout and then choose margin and columns and, and yeah you you can open the gutter but that's too much but yeah so yeah and i think just for the purpose of this i'm gonna open a little bit the gutter because that is okay okay so the gutter what what exactly does that do the gutter opens uh the in between i will say is uh... this little space between the columns the right. columns oh okay i see so they're nice in case like if you wanna for instance if you have two big text blocks that basically divides them right yeah, yeah. Okay. so then you can have text block here if you have a really small gap in between these it, it's not gonna read as two different things it might read as as one thing so for mm. the just for the sake of keeping it uh, clear for the reader a, a yeah. little bit a, just a little bit more just uh, a little bit more <laughs> the i think the rule is bigger than your than your uh baseline grid so oh okay interesting that's good to know so yeah it should be a little bit oh. more okay that's perfect visual trick. looks like we're good Yes. So um, let's do the I I I like how was the other I forgot how was the cherry cherry Oh uh, I love, I love you cherry you much. much. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Eva, now uh, I think your question is now answered in InDesign. The massive grid you have, how do you do that? <laughs> we just answered it, I think, pretty pretty well. Oh, and, and I didn't talk about the, well, I can also talk about a little bit of um, the master pages, if that makes sense. Like this little thing here. Yeah, uh, let's, do, let's do a really, really quick quick one and then jump into into the work. Um, here, the master pages are, is if you add something to the master pages, it will add to all the pages. So if you mm -hmm. put hello here, uh, you will have, you will have you a show everywhere, but yeah. it's just that, um, these surfaces are probably covering the hello. Yeah. Now, that's so. the thing. So, yeah. um, for instance, but you can also add backgrounds to master pages and then put something on top. So that will be also something interesting. And then you can also add master pages. Um, so they're basically, um, so they're basically kind of like a guideline page where you have, let's say, um, the page number, the page title or the chapter title, 
and then you can have different master page page layouts that you can reuse throughout your magazine or your book or whatever you know they can all have different grids so that can be really really helpful to take a look at by the way recently i think um i know from xd at least that they have removed the the name master so because it's it kind of goes back to um the times of slavery so they kind of were uh getting rid of the word master and all the software so i think indesign might be also in the process of it um I, well, but, makes sense but but um let's say in xd they have removed the word master from uh before it was called master component and now it's called main component so i'm thinking they should be also doing something similar they, well. yeah i mean it, it makes sense mm, yeah cool. which is a very interesting kind of um fact that i have learned uh, just recently but yeah i think they came up with that probably a month ago or two months ago uh, yeah i think two months oh. ago and uh, yeah jonathan is, a- is saying in design scares me jonathan do- don't be scared you don't have to be scared <laughs> don't be but scared. yeah it can be a little bit intimidating having all all those guides and everything you know uh, kind of yeah popping out <laughs> but um i would just i would just go step by step just learn a new thing every single day and then it won't be that scary exactly i exactly in it's just you know it's just a matter of trying and it's easier to try when you don't have pressure or like a deadline so if you find that you want to do something and you have free time just do it and it's just yeah. practice you know practice creates the profession how is that the phrase that i don't know how to say but like if you practice then you become professional right yeah but it's true they also say that if you practice something 10 ten thousand hours so no matter the amount of days but ten thousand hours then you are a professional at something because you have practices so much that uh you now are a professional and um i looked into that and i was trying to understand how many years that that is let's say if you're working on it full time um how many years will that be and that will be approximately five years so really? yeah if you want to be really really professional at something or an expert you need five years for that they said that's why they always yeah. ask you five years of experience in every job exactly right <laughs> But in my opinion, even if you go to school, that's already kind of, um, that's where it kind of starts that you practice. So by, by the finish of school, when you're done with school, um, that's probably when you are already almost, you know, almost professional. (laughs) I do agree. Yeah. um, My school taught me so many things and I just the the teachers in in the university I went, I, they're just so good people, like mm-hmm. uh, very generous. Um, it's nice to cross paths with people that are like that, that they don't, they are not, um, like, you know, they they share their knowledge and their resources, and I think mm-hmm. it's very cool. Yeah. I think having professors uh, at university who are willing to share the knowledge and re- and resources, especially, so let's say they know some uh, hiring managers and they want to help you get an internship. I think that's really really important to get that kind of guidance during your studies. During my studies, it was kind of hmm, it was not really the case. All of our professors were really into um, automotive design. Oh. So they would always send everybody for an internship to Volkswagen. <laughs> no way! <Did laughs> yeah. you know? No, no, oh. it was not my thing at all. I, I, I did not want to work on the car key for a new model uh, for like six months. It's, it's not my thing. <laughs> no, no, for sure. No, that's the reason why I was like, mm, maybe industrial design is not quite something for me because I did, I did study, study industrial design, not graphic design. Industrial design was so intimidating to me. I was this close to choosing that too. And then I was like, wow, like you need to be so intelligent. Um, it's not about being intelligent it's also very mathematical right so there is no room for um let's say for craziness or for 
well maybe for experiment but once you are working for a company let's say you work for Volkswagen you can't really do anything like you already have all the guidelines everything given to you and yeah. then you just have to follow to whatever your art director tells you so there is really no room for I would almost say creativity you know yeah and um, that kind of turned me off a little bit of that and um, pushed me away and I started doing graphic design and here I am <laughs> I think I chose the right thing <laughs> yeah yeah it's the graphic design so wonderful wonderful career um yeah. chuk chuk. okay no. that one this one yeah, Ashraful is saying, I always try to make InDesign things in Illustrator. That is interesting. That is interesting. And you can connect the pages like Mecha did yesterday. So what she did was really, really cool. Actually, she connected a file, an illustration that she has been working on in Illustrator as basically kind of like a smart object inside InDesign. So whenever she will go back into Illustrator and make changes, in that illustration, they will be updated into her InDesign document as well. So that's a really, really cool tip. Um, Mechi, maybe you can quickly, quickly show how you did that again, how, how you kind of connected. Absolutely. I think that's, a, that's an interesting thing. It, it's an interesting way to kind of put InDesign and Illustrator together while working at the same time. In so both. let's use this little cherry here. Um, so, so cute. <laughs> Cute, <laughs> but I forgot the I forgot the leaf. There you go. Oh my god, those could be like looking more like eyes too. Imagine. Yeah. Oh. Oh, they actually do look like eyes already. <laughs> but so cool. I love okay. It. Um. So here, what we can do? I'm gonna pop up a little bit. Is yeah. Um. Yeah, I was thinking the same actually. Yeah, they were too like. Yeah. Bigger to how it's just a thin thing. So uh, yeah. here, what we can do is you have the artboard and then you save this. Um, let's see, cherries. Okay, so you first save the Illustrator file with your artboard that you want to place in InDesign, and then and then you come back to Design, and what you do is Command D or Control D, depending which to place one. to place an image or an object, and that's where you can select the Cherry's Illustrator file and place it into your page. And now, if if Mechi goes back into Illustrator and makes some changes, those changes once she saves the um, the Illustrator file will be then applied to the InDesign fi file as well. Yeah. For instance, let's say so that we want to add a little I don't know shadow, like a little yeah. shadow. Um, yeah. like, here come, like something like that yeah that's really cute by the way I like it <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, okay like something like that yeah you save it and then you go back to InDesign what it's going to say here on the links panel is that there is like a conflict or something is wrong this means that uh, the document that you have here placed is different now so the only thing you have to do is just update the link and then you will Yay. have to yeah that's really awesome yeah um yeah the links panel is very helpful and it has a lot of information that it's really helpful in in when you are for instance um preparing files or like seeing uh which resolution each file it is here you have all that info and it's pretty pretty cool yeah that's awesome so it's nice that's to cool keep an eye on that yeah totally and also sometimes at the bottom it tells you right well, now you have 162 <laughs> errors <laughs> Oh my god, I don't even want to look at it. Why so so sometimes, guys, once that pops out, sometimes when you open an, a, an InDesign document and you're missing the links to the images, let's say. So let's say you open up a, an InDesign file with, with um, lots of images, a magazine or something like that, and it will show you a lots of errors because those images were linked but they're not existing on your computer they were only existing on the computer of the person who has created the file right so now if they don't um if they don't include those images into the file which i think you can uh place them into the file right you can um 
uh, how do you call that? So basically, when uh, when the image is integrated into the file, of course, it makes the file bigger. But once somebody else opens the file, um, they can access all the images and everything, and they will not get any error messages. Also, what you can do is you can uh, package an InDesign file, which includes all the fonts, all the um, everything that's linked to the file is going to be put inside a folder. And, it, and that will also include the InDesign file that you are actually working on or have been working on. So whenever you want to share an InDesign file, make sure to package it so that the person, when they open it, will have all the links in one folder. That's really, really helpful. Exactly, yes. That's, that was in all points. In Illustrator, you can do the same thing. You can, um, you can you know, basically include the image incorporated. Let's see, I think it's called link, not link image. Um, I'll have to look up the exact term. So I have an image and then I want to link. Yeah, so definitely make sure that um, things that are, oh yeah, it's called link and then you can place it or embed embed an image. So if you go onto your links panel, you will be able to right click the image that you, um, no, not, not actually not right click it, but you will be able to select the image. And then you will find this little like hamburger menu. And that's where you can embed the images into the file. Of course, um, keep in mind that your file will get bigger. So an Illustrator file can get really, really big once you place a lot of images and once you um, embed them. Uh, but it's very useful, for example, when you are printing something, when you're sending out a file to a printer, if you don't embed the images, um, they will not be available for the person opening the file, right? So you will need to embed those images. Exactly. You can save someone a really <laughs> big headache by doing that. Yes, so, yeah. yes. And Jeteremy is saying those cherries are adorable. <laughs> oh, I agree you. there. I think they're so cute. And um, oh my gosh, this is so cool. I love this already. This double double page illustration comes out really, really nice. And Clever is saying, I love taking vector shapes from Illustrator into InDesign so to avoid linked art I use for simple logos. Yes, it, it, that's true. You can. That's what I was doing with this. It's actually you for instance you grab it you, you grab the leaf and you copy and then you just paste it so this becomes an editable vector file mm -hmm. yes yeah. yeah. so it's cool and, but to to go back can you go back into illustrator and edit it then no i mean once you copy paste it okay yeah okay yeah, so once, once you, you kind of set with the illustration and when you say okay this will stay like that then you can also copy and just just copy and paste things. By yeah. the way, that also works with all the other software as well. So you can also just copy something from Illustrator and paste it into Photoshop or um, XD. You can just copy paste things. That works pretty, pretty well. Even Dimension works like that too. So you can, you don't even have to use the libraries. You can, I mean, of course it makes sense to use the libraries to be able to access all the files. But if you don't mind just jumping from application to uh, application, then um, you can just copy paste things. Cool. I want to grab this and throw it to the back. Yeah, Razvan is saying thank you so much for this live, girls. We are en really enjoy it. Yeah, we are enjoying it too. It's so much fun to watch Mechi design. She she does such fun stuff. It's just really fun to watch. <laughs> oh, I'm having a lot of fun too. So thank you for being there. Yeah, yeah. It's always cool to kind of work on on a passion project, um, and you know have a conversation on the side. I, I also love to uh, watch Adobe Live while I'm working on something. So if you guys want to work on something at the same time, feel free to do so. Very helpful. I just see in the chat. Yeah. Very sweet, everyone. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Fadi is asking, can you speak Arabic? No, I can't. I can't, I can't speak neither. Spanish. I can only speak Spanish <laughs> and English. Some kind of... <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome. 
it's good. Sometimes people don't even are, aren't even able to speak their own language. So you are definitely in, have such an advantage. That's awesome. And Reverb Mike is saying, now I'm hungry. <laughs> hungry yeah. for some cherries. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love cherries so much. I love cherries as well. Okay, cool. so now I think we're moving to the ramen workshop. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's do it. So for here, I was thinking... Cornell is saying, just came here to say... I just call to say. <laughs> that reminds me of that song. Yes. Um, just, just came here to say, have a good one, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. And you too, Cornell. You also have a good one. And hopefully you'll stay here for a little bit and hang out with us. Okay. And Razvan is saying, I'm new into learning um, Illustrator too. And that's very helpful. Oh my God. It makes me so, it makes so much more sense using tools and things. Yeah, totally. And Stone is saying, I love grammar. Yeah, uh, well, you should. You definitely have an advantage if you're good at grammar. <laughs> I really, when, I, when I'm on a, on a live stream and I'm typing something, usually I misspell things. I misspell things all the time when I'm, for, for, for some reason, it's only when I'm on a stream. When I'm streaming and I have to type something, there's always some really funny stuff coming out. Really? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know why. Usually I don't have that problem, but only on the streams, maybe because there is more tension, more um, excitement. Yeah, I, I, whenever I have to transcript something, I always like insert uh, error. So I try always to even copy on paste or paste information because if I write it, I probably will introduce new, new new errors here and there i cannot concentrate on what you're saying because this double pager looks so good <laughs> i was just looking at it i was like oh that's so cool i, I really want to see it printed that double page illustration the, yes i mean i, I have a printer here but it would be so noisy if i print it <laughs> no i mean like just to see the um the book Ah, the book whole, like thing and when once you open the illustration you're like i love you very much you're like oh this so this is so cool yeah this could be, is that going to be like the center page once you open it in the middle it has yes um that will be pretty cool because i am I'm actually thinking this could be side of saddle stitch because it's it's just a small one mm -hmm. so yeah always the 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 middle of the of the brochure, like little scenes, are the ones that you get open the most because it's just yeah. the fold is right there. I remember back then when I was like 14, 15, we had a magazine called Bravo in Germany. And uh, so Bravo always had this poster inside. So you could always like pull out the poster from the middle and hang it in on your in your room. Yeah, oh, cool. I had a lot of I had a lot of Britney Spears, <laughs> J Lo, and Fifty Cent. The goodies, <laughs> the goodies. Yeah. Oh, what did you guys? Did you guys? Uh, I'm curious in the chat, guys. Did you have that experience where you kind of had those teen magazines and then you would pull out the posters and hang them in your room? That would be really interesting to know. And Chris is also asking if you're sharing a passion project on Behance or Instagram, do you have any suggestions for how to explain the project? The project is not for any actual client. I always, with my personal projects, I always um, just put a little caption under. Like uh, this is a this is a personal project. I use this. Like this was my my personal brief, um, but. I think it, if you just put it like personal passion project, it would be fine. As long as you treat it as a real project, right? Like as long as you have a brief and you follow some rules, um, I think mm -hmm. it, I think it's fine. Yeah. I also think that it's important to um, kind of set yourself some rules and think about an imaginary uh, person who would use this book and think about their needs, think about uh why you're creating something and how will it fulfill its purpose right so mechi yesterday was talking about how legibility really matters so um that's something that you could mention right just write a little introduction you don't even have to say that it's a um 
sometimes I don't even say that it's a, a personal project or anything. I just mention who is it made for and how did I solve the problem or how, um, you know, how was the how were the design decisions made to solve the problem or to attract a specific audience. Um, so that's the only important thing that your portfolio has to show that you're thinking about what you're doing, not just doing out of, you know, out of your mood or out of your taste, but really have those rules that you kind of follow in. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good feedback and uh, um, um, tip. I want to create, um, <laughs> I want to create a noodle. Is, oh yeah. Noodles. Noodles are awesome. Okay. That's cool. Christopher is saying, I really hoping Illustrator for iPad will have most of the features. Christopher, I have good news for you. So uh, Illustrator on the iPad is now available for pre-order. So you will be the first one to get the, um, to be um, basically to have the app available for you uh, one day before the actual release. So make sure to do that. Um, I think I think there should be some link uh, about that. Maybe Yavuruval, if you can find that, that would be cool. But you can sign up for a pre-release of uh, iPad, iPad um, Illustrator on the iPad. It's really, really amazing. I had the, I had, I was lucky enough to be able to test it and to uh, kind of play around with it already. But um, it's going to be available really, really soon. So make sure to sign up for the pre-release. Yeah, I tried it too. It was so good. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. awesome. Cool. And design for iPad or update computer. Really? Da, da, da. Okay. Oh, Razvan is saying my room was full of posters with 50 Cent and Beyonce. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> Mine too. I also had some Beyonce posters. This is awesome. Um, cool. And Vipa was saying uh, I did this in my school library. I'm wondering if you're talking about the magazines. That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, okay. Bruno is saying these mag magazines were some kind of druggers. Okay, my parents let me paint in, on my bedroom walls. Oh, Carol, That's, you're that so lucky. Dream. Yeah, that would be my dream too. My parents will never allow me to paint on my walls. Never. No, never. No. Yeah. Never. Well, we, my mother, <laughs> what we she let us do was like I just uh, like stick stuff uh, with the uh, painter uh, tape, and uh -huh. uh, that wouldn't. Uh, like um, <laughs> fuck up the sorry mess up the uh, paint <laughs> Beep. Um, yeah, sorry. No worries. um so yeah uh that's what we would do and we would just like cut uh, stars on paper and uh, and do that happy times yeah. simple times yeah bruno is saying i uh, had like thousands poor trees yeah Nowadays, we have some digital magazines, which is awesome. If you guys want to uh, check out some digital magazines, there is a site called issue.com, I-S-S-U-U dot C-O-M. Um, and it's a really, really great site. You can look at through the most um, you know, famous magazines. You can also use it to publish your portfolio if you have a PDF portfolio. That's a really, really amazing resource, free to use. And I, I think some of the magazines are, or like, let's say it's a cookbook or something, some of them you have to pay for to look through them but or let's say you have like cosmopolitan magazine or some like fashion magazines for those i think you have to pay a couple dollars but otherwise most of the things are free and it's really awesome yeah it's cool Cute. you are not wasting any paper yeah exactly it's good 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 Mm. Kostya is saying you two are a really good team hopefully um, I hope you get to do this again yes this is actually our second time together Mechi last time was also really awesome um, take a look if you want to find us I think you can find the replay on YouTube as well so um, check that out but not right now do it after <laughs> yeah <laughs> or, right or, or tomorrow or on the weekend <laughs> yeah so, it yes was it's so much fun last time it was yeah great. last time it was super fun so she, so mechi was creating some movie uh festival posters for a japanese movie festival and it was super super awesome it was really awesome i had a lot of fun yeah me too I was and, so and nervous. Mechi, 
yeah Mechi also printed some of the posters so next day we had those huge posters um printed that was awesome do they look like noodles I think yeah so. kind of maybe add some color or you want to keep it black and white i think i'm gonna keep it black and white because okay. the other spread was very 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 colorful yeah no it does look really cool i like it yeah it does look like noodles yeah it's cool <laughs> it's cool i like how you're overlapping the text with the noodles but it's still really legible right Super yeah they give this like party feel <laughs> <laughs> oh, I this could it. be like uh, the, the party strings, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. If yeah, you... like con confetti or uh, stuff like that. Yeah. If you do noodles, then you can repurpose them to be confetti. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, Sharon is saying I had a great photo of Prince on my wall. Oh, Prince, I had I did not know how to appreciate um, you know classics like that or like when I was 14, 15. Um, my dad bought me a Prince album and he bought it along all the other things like a JLo album, a Beyonce album and so on. So I was like, why did he buy it? I don't even listen to that kind of music. But then I've realized how cool that music is and how funky and how crazy it is. And I've not right these days I'm listening to everything. So I'm also listening to Prince. It's really awesome. Oh, uh, that's great. Yeah, the doors. Um, I also love the doors. Oh, the doors, yes. Uh, it's so good. Like, yeah, some, yeah my, my dad, uh, he introduced me to, like, Genesis and stuff. And... Yeah, that's awesome. Mm, okay. Pre-order. Um, well, pre-order, is it is called, I think they call it pre-order, but really, you it's part of your Creative Cloud subscription. So if you already have a Creative Cloud subscription, you can use it for free. So don't you worry about that. Uh, Nahul is saying, I admire Mechi's art so much. Yay. Oh, and, really? and Sharon is saying, Sharon is saying Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, such a good song. I'm going to listen to some prints later on. I'm, yes. oh, I love I love it. <laughs> cool. You know. And my friends, by the way, we only have 43 minutes until the Daily Creative Challenge reviews. So make sure to submit your Daily Creative Challenges into our Discord channel. The link to that you will find in the challenge button up above the chat. So if you click that, you will be able to access the chat. And if even if you're new to, um, new to this um, channel and everything, just take a look at what the others are doing. Maybe it will encourage you to create something of your own, even if you're a beginner. I think there are about 30,000 different uh, creatives. So everybody's kind of giving each other feedback and posting their work in progress, their daily creative challenges. You can also get some uh, feedback on your portfolio. So that's a really, really cool platform. I would definitely recommend you guys to check it out. Plus one. Yeah. Plus one on that. Mm, okay, so this is the Roman Workshop PA. Um, we have more information. Yeah. Brenda is saying AI for iPad expected 1021. Woo. It sounds like it's going to be during Adobe Max. Because oh. uh, Adobe Max, guys, is from the 20th till the 22nd. Sign up. It's free. You can, you get to see all the sessions, everything that's, that's uh, available during Max. Usually you will be able to see. So sign up and use the chance. Oh, my cousin just wrote. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mechi. You're killing it. Love you all. Love you too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my family is a huge supporter. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, family is really important. And Kevin is also saying hi from Guatemala. Hola. Hi, Kevin. Good to see you. Cool. Anthony is asking, do you use character styles for this project? Or do you just copy paste the uh, text? I am copy pasting text because it's a small project and I don't want to get into messy stuff with these with the styles. But you should definitely create styles for for your for your yeah. whole um, um, how you say file. It's please don't just just create. Yeah. Don't do what I do. But for instance, here <laughs> um, here we should definitely create a new style because. Um, 
That's awesome. No, it's. I think it's fine as long. I mean, it's a ten pager or what, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's thirteen pages. Yeah. yeah. So if it's a smaller project, I think you can just copy paste the text boxes and just reuse the same typeface. But if you're working on a larger project, like let's say a book or a magazine, or let's say you're, you know, reusing those typefaces over several magazine issues, uh, make sure to save those character styles and everything maybe to your CC library. So you can also use those over different projects and over different files that can be also really, really helpful. Yeah. And Kyle, Kyle is saying, I have almost every The Doors album on vinyl. Oh my God. I love it. I had a vinyl player. Do you have an, a vinyl player, Mechi? No, I don't, but I really want to have one. Um, yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. Do you? No, but I used to have one when I was back in Germany, but I, did, I didn't have the chance to put it in my suitcase. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't able to bring any, any of my stuff. I had so many things. I had like, tons of magazines like fashion magazines that i have collected over time uh for my scanning project so um i had a ton of stuff yeah or yeah that project was amazing did you do you go back to germany often or kind of yeah maybe like uh once a year twice a year right now i was not i was not able to go since last year october yeah. i think so because of covid obviously but um yeah maybe maybe we'll go sometime soon hopefully i yeah i feel you i was i had a um, plane ticket to go to argentina on june <laughs> oh and you weren't able to no no of course no such a bummer oh uh, yeah but let's wait it out and soon we'll be able to travel again hopefully <laughs> when they come up with the vac vaccine yes um Okay. Anthony's saying I'm all ready for Max. Yay, me too. Yeah. Uh, Voodoo Val is saying I have a record player. Yeah, it's so awesome. I, I would always go to like those thrift stores where you can find <laughs> a lot of stuff. And I will find bands that I had no idea about. And then I um then I would just listen to like to them based on the album cover, the cover art, because I always love to kind of pick pick the albums uh, with the cover art, not necessarily, you know, knowing the name of the, of the artist or anything like that. Yeah, here in my, like, one block away from my home, uh, there is a, a record um, store start. with vinyls and like cassettes and like old stuff and even though I don't have a record player, I do have some vinyls in my home. Um, mm -hmm. It's just so nice to just go in there and like see and they yeah. have old stuff. And some of the covers are really beautiful. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Pieces of it's art. an art form. It's an art form. Yeah. yeah, there are there are designers and artists who spe specialize on uh, cover art, right? For albums and books and so on. Yeah. and. Um, it's just I find it interesting because the L, like the LP format is like square and I don't know it to me it's pretty it's large just, too yeah and it's it's square is always a, a weird like a weird format to me to work on uh, so yeah I always admire yeah. like super cool um, uh, graphics and artworks maybe yeah. they don't have <laughs> they don't have anything to do with the music or may, maybe they do but. It's yeah. always nice to see the relationship between that. Yeah, I remember a specific album that I got like that, where I I had no idea what it is. It was Dan Reed. It's a band, and they are pretty funky, like not funky, but um, I would say it's like pop. But oh my gosh, it's so good, Dan really? Reed. Yeah, their old album. Oh my god, it was it's so good. Oh, I can't even describe it. <laughs> yeah. I want to listen to it right now. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I'll, I'll listen to all of that after. I, I can't wait. I usually, when I'm done with the stream or before the stream, I'm I'm always listening to really loud music to kind of get myself hyped up. And also, just when I'm taking a break, I really love listening to music. It can be so relaxing. Yes. Or it can hype you up. Yeah, depending That's on the music that you're listening to. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And Eva is saying, I do the same thing, by the way, Eva. Um, Eva does that same thing with wine, choosing based on the label. <laughs> same. I mean, who doesn't, right? <laughs> like, I have so many, like, I have a couple of beers in my fridge that I don't think I will enjoy drinking, but it's just the, the cans. Lab the label art is just beautiful. so beautiful, right? <laughs> yes. And you're like, I agree. Yeah. Natasha is saying Keanu Reeves is going to be at Max, apparently. Oh my God, yes. Is and he? also, yes. And also, Tyler the Creator, which I'm really, really excited about. Do you know Tyler the Creator? Well, yeah, what? Really? Then yeah. Yeah, he's going to, have to, to be part of the, I think, the keynote. Oh or my. I'm not sure if it's the keynote or some kind of artist, um, That's artist talk. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah, you can see the whole list of speakers um, on on the max.adobe.com site. Voodooval shared the link if you guys want to go check it out. It's awesome. Nice. And Voodooval is also saying, I judge books by the cover all the time. I know you aren't supposed to do that, but oh, but sometimes they look so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. yeah. yeah. Have, you, have you guys ever watched Fahrenheit 451? No. Is it good? It's a. It's actually based on a book uh, by uh, I don't remember. Uh, but it's it's basically a um, book about kind of like um, future imagination of how the future will be, a dystopian book I think they call oh. it. So um, yeah, it's a really nice movie as well. Fahrenheit four five one. It's about when uh, in the future firefighters were trying to instead of uh um kind of um how do you call it uh, when you when you don't make a fire but you try to uh finish it finish the fire uh, <laughs> extinguish extinguish yeah exactly <laughs> so so instead of extinguishing the fires um they would light fires and they will like books on fire wow yeah, so imagine imagine firefighters will be there to destroy information, to destroy history. So that's what it's um, what it's all about, basically. And there isn't this amazing movie. I think it's uh, either on Amazon Prime or on Netflix. So I recommend you guys watching it. It's also yeah. part kind of like a very historical book. That's amazing. Yeah, four five one is the temperature books burn at. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That's oh yeah, Voodooval is saying it's by Red Bradbury. Yes, Red Bradbury. Yeah, he, Red Bradbury is really known for writing dystopian literature. So really, really cool if you guys want to check oh, out. Oh yes. Even I think the book should probably be better than the movie if you guys are into reading. Yeah, Stone is saying to um, put out a fire, extinguish a fire. Yeah, that's, that's uh, put out a fire. <laughs> that's also a good one. Well, we yeah. we are all learning here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's awesome. <laughs> Okay, um, I guess we finished this one. Yay! Yay! Okay. It looks like a party, like confetti, but <laughs> then we're gonna get yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it looks cool. I like it. I like it. And now we are going to move forward with the um, interview. Okay. For this ramen chip that I do have. Oh. Uma Karn is saying, yes, I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, you should take a look at it. It's, it's a really, really good movie. And by the way, if you guys are tuning in from YouTube, make sure to head over to be.net slash live. This is where we're reading the chat. So in case you're wondering why I'm not answering your questions or why Mechi's not <laughs> answering your questions. Maybe hey, that's why. This is the reason, because we're <laughs> reading the chat on be.net slash live. So head over there and ask, ask away, ask us anything. <laughs> Yeah, as you can see, we're talking about Netflix and about um, movies, books, art, design, anything conferences, you want. anything you want. Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, yeah. <laughs> Tyler, the creator. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about Tyler, the creator. Uh, alone, his image on this website on uh, maxwelladobe.com. His uh, the photo that he put there. Oh my gosh, it's it's really cool. Really? 
Yeah, he has like this blonde wig on. I think it's one of the characters that he has created for his music videos. Um, and it's like this like really old school nerdy guy and has like blonde hair uh, and it looks like um I don't know, it's you have to you have to just see it. <laughs> I will have to I will hilarious. have to see it. Yes. Yeah, I think it's one of he's always I think he's always like creating characters. Uh, for his music videos so that he can literally like embody them and um and then all his music videos kind of have to do with that have to do with that specific character it's pretty cool and he also has a really amazing clothing brand called golf wang it's pretty popular actually it's oh it's it's just i enjoy his art so much he's a real real artist you know some music artists they're just into music and um you know about how they sound but he is the all-round talent like he's he does fashion he does artwork he has th this amazing like way to um theoretically kind of express himself yeah with different costumes different characters it's just really cool he's That's... an actor i would say as well he's a performer like definitely he's a performer yeah totally That's pretty cool yeah. I want to... Cornell is saying, is Adobe Max going to be using Cyberpunk theme for the presentations? Um, we will see. <laughs> we shall see. We shall see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sharon is saying with a green suit. Yeah. Yeah, he, I think he's wearing like all kinds of colors. And like, I think he, in his uh, fashion collection, he has like shirts with bananas on it. Like some really, really crazy graphic stuff uh clever is saying can you fox show how to change the color of the text in the box without directly selecting the text uh what was the question how can how to change the color of the text in the box without directly selecting the text is there a way usually when you change mm. when you want to change the color of the text you have to select the text right yeah you have to but in, okay. I think in Illustrator, you don't really have to select the text. You just have to select the text box, right? Yeah. Now here it's if you if you color this, it will color the whole. It the will whole color text. the inside of the box. Basically. Yeah, that's why you have to make um, styles that will change. Like that will. They're yeah. basically for that. Like. Yeah. When you make character styles, you can select, you can make a character style in like lighter gray or in black or whatever colors you want to use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Arslan is asking any collab with Elon Musk with Adobe. I wish that would be interesting. <laughs> that, would be, that would be interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I know they have a collab with Lady Gaga, which is yes. not a comparison, but, <laughs> but they had this, uh, they had this project where they were trying to, um, kind of include a lot of artists to create a uh, cover art for her and, and yeah now creative thing. cloud they have this um this competition like this competition they of using i participated yeah <laughs> that's awesome uh, Wait, what is it called that. again uh it's uh, i think it's the rain on me um, oh rain on me yeah yeah mm -hmm. with it's so cool like it's so cool i have seen such amazing things yeah yeah lady gaga rain on me poster design it's so it's called creativity tour.adobe.com that's the page where you can check that out or you can just google it lady gaga and adobe inspired by rain on me designed by you yes cool and the winners win um one grand prize win at ten ten thousand dollars cash um or a local currency equivalent a high quality print of your poster autographed by lady gaga 12 month adobe all apps creative cloud subscription and the second place or nine second place winners are getting 400 dollars in cash um autographed lady gaga merchandise and three month adobe all, all apps creative cloud subscription so and then everything is described basically in this link um Budova, maybe you can share that it's called creativity tour adobe.com um and yeah so it, it could be a thing, you know, it could be a cool, cool way to kind of maybe try win something. That would yeah. be awesome. Yeah. And like if you win, fantastic. But if you don't win, then it's, it's a good opportunity to just try something new or okay. put yourself out there. 
So that's good. Yeah. I will Robin has a, has a tip for us. So you select the text box and change to T icon next to swatches and change the text color. So apparently you are able to change the text color without selecting the text directly. Oh. Have you ever tried that? Is there mm. a T? Uh, select the text box and change to T icon next to swatches. Next to swatches. Oh yeah. On the left side, where you have the swatches at the bottom, there is a little T. Here? Yeah. The, don't select text, just ah. select the text box. Okay. And then press the T. Mm, I can't. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. I'm that doing it bad. Oh, maybe you have uh, something in your... I see at the bottom you have a little error message for something that you inserted there. Some... No, it no, no, no. Yeah, 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 what is that? Yeah, maybe that's the problem. Let Can you see. try... Yeah, and oh, no, it's not, it's not mm. working. Interesting. I have... I have no idea why, but apparently this is this is the way you can do it. Wow. Maybe we have something. Maybe you have multiple text. No, actually, it's just one text, uh, one typeface, right? That you're using. Yeah, just one. Interesting. interesting. Delete that too. Hmm. That is interesting. Hmm. But that would be yeah, so but, cool. But that would be yeah. I think that sh that should actually work. Maybe it's just not working for us. <laughs> Great. Um, okay. Thank you so much for the tip. Okay. Yeah. How are you all doing? Um, Umakorn is, is saying downloading Fahrenheit 451 now. Mm, interesting. Look at the swatches funnel to the right. And I feel wrong to activate the T. I think I have to activate the T first. Ah. Uh, oh. No, wait. Can you? Oh, yeah, Wait. now and then the text. The T, then the text box. Mm -hmm. Just select, put, uh, press the T and then and then select the text box after. Yeah, and now the color. Yeah, buddy. Oh, it's changing back. That's I'm interesting. Can I have I... no idea why it does that. That is interesting. <laughs> well, but, but it worked for someone here, so. Yeah, that's good. That's cool. <laughs> I'm going to try good. it on my other in design file to see. Maybe it's yeah. just a matter that this this file is. So. Yeah, Voodooval is also saying that they did a collaboration with Billie Eilish. I, yeah, I remember last year there was a collaboration with Billie Eilish as well. That's how I actually I have I had no idea about like Billie Eilish as like a person. I remember hearing some of her songs, but um, ever since the last Max, I kind of like um, saw some of the interviews and stuff, and she seems to be a really really cool artsy person. Awesome. Wow. But you didn't meet her, right? Hmm? You meet no, her? No, no, no. No, no. I just saw her on <laughs> stage, I remember. Wow. Yeah. Along with 16,000 people. <laughs> I mean... It was a, 16, a couple thousand for sure. Yeah. And Voodooval, thank you so much for reminding. 20 minutes, 25 minutes until the challenge feedback deadline. So make sure to submit your daily creative challenges, guys. We will be reviewing them here on the live stream and give you some feedback. Yes. Robin is saying strange works for me. Yeah, I think it should work for everybody. Just... Except for us. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Manos is saying hello, hello. Hi, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Cool. Santiago is saying design is looking fantastic. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, now I this think... is kind of I think this double page kind of takes more of a character of a magazine. Um, while the other ones are kind of there to balance it, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. The other ones are more, um, yeah, more graphic -y, I would say. This one is uh, has actually information in it. I'm gonna edit yeah. the picture so it doesn't look so out of place with the rest of the things. Mm -hmm. So you just uh, right click and then edit in Photoshop or what yes. did you? Okay. So to edit is you grab in the link panel and then oh, okay. edit and you just okay cool that. awesome i'm gonna grab i'll probably make it blue or green that is cool clever saying it's probably due to the linked text boxes that might be the case oh that could also be the case yeah okay so let's grab maybe this 
Yeah, Natasha is saying Billy's whole style is so cool. She's very talented. Yeah, I totally agree. Billy Eilish is just really, really um, an artist instead of, you know, it's not just, she's not just a singer, as I was mentioning earlier. Kind yeah. of comparable to, um, kind of comparable to Tyler the Creator or, you know, the big ones, Missy Elliott, like all those, all the, all the artists that are not just into music, but they're also into setting up their music videos and, you know, creating that, all of that really, really unexpected stuff. So yeah, I love their work too. Yeah. Cool. Kyle is saying, I'm learning so much about InDesign. Yeah, even, even I, we're always, always learning because everybody has their own process, right? So uh, even if you think you're such a pro uh, in the software, you can still learn something and still, uh, you know, see somebody else's process, how they're doing things. Absolutely. That's the magic of all of this. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I totally agree. It's awesome how you can like jump from uh, InDesign to Illustrator, from InDesign to Photoshop. Everything is pr pretty well connected so that you can just, you know, edit a, an image once you already have put it in or edit um, the illustration once you already place it in your document. So that can be really, really interesting yeah. to use in InDesign. I love the way you stylize the images. I think it really works now. Yeah, it was it was feeling a little bit um, like mm -hmm. out of place. Like I don't know, we have been using such uh, strong colors that um, yeah, just having yeah. full color images uh, didn't yeah. quite feel. So how exactly did you do? Um, did you did you use a um, gradient map or something like that on top of the images? Yes, or? is. Okay. So what you do is you have a picture and then you choose here. Um, the ad you create a new adjustment layer and it's gradient map. So mm -hmm. uh, here you have this panel and then you can literally choose from anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's weird. So um, you have used the, your color that you have used in your other shapes earlier, right? In your yes. illustrations. So what I did was to paste uh, one of these. So I color pick this and mm -hmm. then use it to create the color gradient. So cool. So yeah, you have to here you can choose, but if you choose pink, then you know, you kind of like get the, the awesome. idea. Yeah. 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 I think gradient maps are a really cool way to stylize images and to make them work with your other layouts and so on and unify yeah. images, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, well, these are taken from internet, but when you make something to, for print, you have to make sure that they are in CYMK and 300 dpi, because if not, they're going to look um, pixelated. So take a, mm -hmm. just keep in mind that if you are working with Vector, uh, it's fine. That would be always great. But if you work with, um, you know, pixels, uh, just make sure that you double check that. Mm -hmm. um, like this one, you can see in the property panel, what is it? Well, in the link panel, you can see it's RBG and it's 200 dpi. It could work, but, but it's not ideal. Yeah, it's not ideal. So how do you change that from, C, from C, RGB to CMYK? You have to just do what I did first is... Um, this is how I do it. If you have another, it will be more than mode and then CMYK. CMYK. And then you okay. save it and then it is. Okay. Perfect. I why I keep opening so you, <laughs> you just really want to look up something. Yeah. But see, uh, <laughs> subconsciously. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's CMYK. Cool. Yeah. So it's that easy. Just it's, uh, it's... change the color mode in Photoshop and save it and boop. Easy peasy. Yep. <laughs> I wanna change. I wanna clean a little bit my desk here because it's a little bit messy. So uh, here it's a little bit of. Um, here I'm gonna use some fake text. 
And Stone is saying, always keep learning. That's a key for me. Now 60 years old and learning still, Adobe Life is my favorite place to discover. Yeah, I, I totally agree, Stone. And I think um, we have to learn because we have to keep on learning because technology is evolving so fast. We definitely have to keep up with all the things. I'm imagining in five to 10 years, we will have to design for uh, virtual reality, right? So experiences will then not be on the, on the screen. They will be also in the three dimensional space. So, um, augmented reality, virtual reality, it will be a thing, I promise. So, um, so going into that and experimenting already would also be super, super, super beneficial. I know a lot of designers who kind of go into the 3d space already to explore because they see the changes coming and they want to be prepared for that. Right. Julie, look at this. I got this and then whoop. Oh yeah, it works. Perfect. It works. It worked perfectly. I think the thing here is that if they're linked, they are it's not working. Yeah, okay. Or maybe if you oh if you select all of them, does that work? Uh let me see. No. No. Hmm. So yeah, I think it just uh functions with single text box. I love your sweater, by the way. It's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Adding a little awesome. bit of color. I don't yeah. wear it that much because it's white and I always, uh, when I eat, I always uh, throw <laughs> stuff on <laughs> so I'm not to use it that much. Um, but yeah. That's funny. Yeah, Umakorn is saying I haven't used InDesign for so long. A lot must have changed, newly added. Need to dive into it again sometime. Totally, yes. Things are updating all the time, especially since we have the CC libraries. Things have been, you know, so much more easy and um, the collaboration with other people and plus also the, in the interaction between all the apps got so much better in the past couple of years. So definitely... Um, try and kind of don't get stuck in your in your workflows always explore new things and how you can optimize your workflows it can really save you a lot of time with all the new things that you know are coming out M monthly I, I would say they i think they have at least in xd they almost have an update every every month i would say not not every month maybe like every three months but really really often and um things are constantly changing yeah Okay, Cornell is asking, um, Aichi, this question is for you. What's okay. inner margin called in InDesign? It has is it, it has a specific name, but can't remember right now, and it's bugging me. This one? Inner what? margin. I think so. Let's see. Inside margin. <laughs> inside mar okay, it's called inside margin, I guess, yeah. It's a margin from the inside, <laughs> basically. Yeah. I, mean, I, guess, I always say like inner margin too. Yeah. Um, the gutter is the space between text boxes. So, yeah, the gutter. Maybe, maybe Cornell was talking about the gutter. That could be the case. Okay. And Rashid is saying, excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Rashid. I think, Ooh. yeah, I think Mechi is doing a really great job. Um, Thank you, you guys. Cool. Okay, I changed the die face a little bit because I didn't like it that much. The one I didn't, I had. Uh, if you wanna, if if you want, for instance, the punctuation, punctuation. Uh, like or uh, I hyphenation um, signs to be outside the text box, you have to go to story and click optical. Oh, and that it will just create it and like a you know like a a better it's a, more yeah. like a, for alignment is is better to me uh, visual wise but it's optical really up margin to. alignment I have to remember that that's an awesome tip thanks so much Mechi for sharing um so yeah I wish I'm just gonna replicate this text and add it here this is a beautiful thing about passion perfects you can actually do whatever you want yeah arslan is saying any new ai based tools to be expected in adobe max arslan you bet you bet there will be some more ai <laughs> tools uh, even last year there were mm -hmm. already some really really cool um really cool add-ons like the character animator and and many many other things um 
So yeah, I'm really excited to see what's going to be this year. So make sure to uh, participate at all the keynotes. That's where basically all the new things are being discussed. And um, yeah, it's I'm really excited for that. Oh, yeah. This is way more organized. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, cool. So I guess this is fine. Um, I would like to add a little. Since we are using a lot of uh, these um, strokes all over mm -hmm. the place, we should definitely keep it consistent and, you know, keep using it. So, yeah. Totally. Yeah, I think it's a very, really cool um, element that also can help you create, you know, a layout, like a flow in your information, right? Yeah. So I see you also using the triangle as kind of like a direction pointer so that the person knows where to continue reading, right? Yes. That's really interesting. Yeah, um, it's super cool. I also love that the hexagon on the left side is kind of like a pointer as well. So guys, everything that kind of looks like an arrow or something that points to something, even one of those noodles can be like a line to help your eye kind of find a guide to follow, find. It's basically like Mechi is taking you on the tour through her pages, right? So she's like, okay, and next thing you will see on the right, it's the picture that's showing um, the, uh, what was it? What was the top picture? <laughs> <laughs> it's showing the ramen noodles. And now yes. if you look to the left, you will be able to continue reading the text. And now... <laughs> <laughs> literally that <laughs> yeah um so this is what it's for it's it's like a arrows can create guides uh someone says i remember julia as i guess on adobe live before and now it's so cool that she's hosting yeah marvin thank you so much yeah um i have started off as a guest probably almost two years ago you were doing the a time flies wine Label. oh yeah that was one of the more recent well that's i think that was my second stream my first stream was also in editorial design i remember i've been working uh, my first stream was with paul trani and i have wor worked on a cookbook oh. in in design so i've been doing similar things like you do but it was way more about like recipes and food and uh you know it was, it was really cool. And that's when I noticed. And back then, the streams were three days long. So we would work for three days on something. Wow, that is that is a long stream, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we will work uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then you actually have way more time to kind of complete a project. But also, it's nice to see what you can make in a shorter time, right? Yeah, I do agree. Um, one thing important here uh, for when you are doing a publishing work is to make sure that you don't have any widows or orphans, which are these, for instance, these war times. That is just one word in one line. Uh, people try to avoid that. So what you can do here to avoid that instead of uh, opening the, the text box, uh, what you can do is insert, um, insert a Special character, no, yes. And insert white space, no break space. There you go. Ah, it's, okay. It's a, let's do it, like, let's do it again. Just insert if white, insert special character, symbol. Um, no, what is it? No, insert white space. It's a non breaking space. space. Non breaking space. Okay, that's so interesting. Those are such insiders, and that's called a widow, right? If it's just one word on in one line. Yes. Interesting. That's good yeah. to know. The shortcut is Shift Command X. That's how I know how to do it. So, but it's it's super cool. And for instance, let's open up the um, paragraph styles. No, let's open the paragraph. And Ashraful is saying, I can't speak in front of camera. What can I do? You can practice. <laughs> Just be in front of camera and then you will practice and then you will learn it. <laughs> I cannot speak in front of camera. 
<laughs> but see, Mercedes is here speaking in front of the camera all day. <laughs> it's less intimidating. So, yeah, I gotta say, it's less intimidating than being in the studio. The, in the studio, I was more nervous. I guess just being at home and like, uh, I don't know, facing. The your your cat is is on your lap and <laughs> living. <laughs> yeah. We want to see your cat. I want to see your cat. My cat. Never... I have to. Oh, like get him like he's oh, like okay he sleeps in, in like up on a big shelf of books and he's there <laughs> it's like he's not see him. get him get him get him please I get him. <laughs> agree with me in the chat please that we want to see her cat i do want <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i love cats i have a dog myself no. and Dogs are great too, but I grew up with cats and cats are always... She doesn't want to come? Is it three? No, he was, uh, he was like, he gave me this look like... <laughs> like I'm not coming downstairs yet, no, he's... Well, he's... And you, can, you can't reach him there? No. <laughs> Mimo, do you want a treat? <sighs> That's the only way I can get him down. Well, he will come down. Yeah, it works. It works with my dog all the time. Really? It's like you, <laughs> yeah. you can always. You want a treat? It's like a magic word. Treat? Treat? I can I can even like say it really really quietly. If I if I notice that she's trying to be mean so, with some other dog, I'm like, treat. <laughs> yes, and fine. she's and she's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> I'm no, ready. No. Exactly. No, it's insane. Like you say the word, and he's like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. uh. No, Everybody in the chat it. wants to see your cat so bad. Uh, I would like... Maybe I can do this. <laughs> oh, yeah, that works. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, see? he's all the way up there. He's yeah. like there. <laughs> so dumb. So cute. He's, he's giving me uh, some... Okay, some that is already satisfying, I would say. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> and I gave you a little showing. tour about my, my home. <laughs> <laughs> You can see my kitchen, everything. Um, we had we had a tour through your InDesign file, and now we also had a tour through your home. It's so. complete. <laughs> um, I wanna so I wanna show you something. It might not be super helpful, but it's also nice to you know know these things. I want you to show us your dog, though. <laughs> Yeah, she's not here now. She, she, uh, she's actually very dangerous because she's really big. And then when she comes into my studio, sometimes she thro throws away the lamps, the lights that I have, because the lights are pretty light. And when she kind of whacks her tail or something, um, it can sometimes throw the lamp around. And then I don't want that. <laughs> no, no. So, so yeah, well, I'll just let her. I'll just don't want the trouble right now. <laughs> no, can you imagine? No, no, we don't want that. Oh, he's... she's really big. She's she's this big. She's I saw she's pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's a big puppy. She's very cute. Yeah, she's really really big. Yeah, uh -huh. and Asha Flu saying I have one too. Yay! Really? Yay! I love cats. I love dogs. I love everything. And Mila Milagros is here. Is that a friend of yours? She's my cousin. She knows oh, my cat okay. very well. Okay. <laughs> Mirmo. Yeah. Is that the name of your cat? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Neocative. Ah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> my cat talks. Meocative. Yeah. My cat talks a lot too. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Okay. So, uh, for instance here let's say that you don't want saturday to be cut because it's an yeah. uh, important word or let's say that it's like a brand and you don't want it to be cut what you can do is just select uh this and then in character you just click no break and then you Mm -hmm. Avoid the break. So, so while the breaks are there in all the other words in this paragraph, this word will be staying as, as a whole, right? Yes, it, this is mm -hmm. a very specific manual thing. Um, yeah, this is a pro can... tip. <laughs> yeah, it, because sometimes you're like, oh no, I don't want this word to be cut, but then if I reshuffle the hyphenation, it I, it changes everything for like for bad. So yeah, yeah that is a good tip just to keep things the way you want and don't allow the software to dominate you, but you dominate the software. Yeah, I totally agree. Basically, like for instance here, this Saturday is like 
starting here and going back there and that's not ideal so let's just do what i did so what did just happen cool and now we are on page what um which page is that we are on page uh you know we should ask we should add pages number so this is page 13. oh and, wow yeah. <gasps> Mechi, i can't believe you went through 13 pages in the in this stream that's that's crazy yeah i cannot that's believe insane. it <laughs> that's insane i think that's this awesome was as much as productive i was ever i think <laughs> <laughs> because usually you'll probably go and play with your cat and then make Prepare a tea lunch. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's change this to black. What do you guys do to um, to procrastinate? What I usually do is I start uh, washing the dishes or I start uh, cleaning the floor in the whole apartment. Cleaning the floor? <laughs> like, yeah. Back in the carpets. Yeah. And like one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. Like, I would not do it uh, for like a couple days and then if i have enough time i would not do it but when i ha want to procrastinate that's what i do what are you guys doing um let us know in the chat oh by the way we do have also the daily creative challenge yes. reviews that we're doing right now so let's jump into my screen and uh let's take a look at what you guys have created what awesome things you guys have created all right uh, can you guys see it already I'm not sure. I think. Okay. All right. So guys, just take a quick look again at the challenge. Today is all about typography. Find, incorporate and manipulate type to make a chip kid inspired book cover. Cool. Yeah. So let's take a look. If you still want to participate in the challenge, by the way, feel free to watch the rewatch the video and get started there. You will be able to get a starter file for this. But now let's take a look at some of the works that you guys have already submitted through the challenge hashtag. As you can see here on the left side, there are all the other things as well, like portfolio reviews, design other. This is where you can submit um, other designs of yours for review. And then also um, you can submit your uh, portfolio for the Max portfolio review se sessions. So when uh, during Adobe Max, they will be also doing um, live portfolio reviews. And this is where you can submit your, um, your, your portfolio link. Cool. So first one up is Avela Alexis, day three. The cover is about a story I wrote in elementary school. Yes, I still remember. Cool. Yeah, I remember uh, your layout from yesterday and I think it looks super, super cool. We have these uh, three dots that you have added yes in yesterday's ch challenge as well. And you are using the same typefaces, which um, I really, really love your kind of approach of giving the layout to all the challenges. And I think, um, yeah, you're doing a great job here. I also love the the cover art that you did. I love the texture a lot, this um, great grayish texture. Um, to me right now, it looks like it has been pulled out a little bit um, and a little bit distorted, um, which is fine on, in this case. Um, and I love the way the F is kind of actually Okay, it looks like it's falling down. I will maybe push it a little bit closer to the A, just a tiny bit, so that it looks like fall be belongs a little bit better together because there is quite a, a lot of white space. Uh, I love the typeface that you chose. I think it works totally great. And also you have a, an amazing uh, hierarchy here and you have a great flow as well here in your layout. Uh, when I'm reading fall and then I have, I'm reading um, uh, but not from the tower. And then this fall, uh, falling person already kind of guides my eye through the bottom to the artist of this book, to the writer of this book. So I think you did a great job in terms of colors, in terms of texture, and in terms of setting it all into a context. And uh, from my side is just uh, applause. And I think you did a great job. Mechi. What do you yeah. think? Yeah, I think it's great. The composition is very powerful. I like the uh, limited color palette. I am a huge fan of that. So that's amazing. Um, yeah, I would say I was actually thinking that maybe the person is not necessary because the F it's still, um, you know, uh, falling. 
So I don't know, maybe you can try without the person, but no, I think it's great. So good job. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and also Jeremy in the chat is saying amazing work. And we have Guadalupe, your sister here in the chat yes, saying, twin saying sister. Uh, oh, wow, that's cool. That's awesome. Proud of your sister. Yay. So cool to have you here, Guadalupe. Thanks for joining us. All right. So next up, we have Anthony. Oh, we have one uh, at the bottom here, Lucy. Let's, let's um, continue with Lucy. So Lucy is doing a great job um, kind of putting these colors together and also, uh, you know, um, creating these shapes. I think that might be the challenge. Is this a, um, I think it's, it's yesterday's challenge where it's all about colors. Um, and you're showing a really, really great uh, example of how kind of the colors can be very saturated and also can be very desaturated and look like pastel tones. Here, I would maybe add um, back a little bit of the pink color because I feel like it's very, very desaturated. Um, the yellow as well, although the blue is actually st are still pretty you know, visible as a color. So, um, and I also love the way you kind of created this um, dimensionality in the middle um, image using, uh, using the same shapes and, but just adding gradients. So I think you did a great job kind of trying to achieve this uh, metallic looking um, three dimensionality. So that you can always do really, really well with, gray, with grayscale tones and uh, using gradients. So that's, that came out really, really great. And in this left side, um, on the left side, I think it looks almost like a vase or something. Um, I like the way you kind of incorporated the gradient into the um, the inside of the vase. I would wish uh, maybe if you could add a little bit more shadow because if you're showing three dimensionality inside, uh, I think you could also show some three dimensionality outside. So that would be also great. Uh, there you can also play with gradients here inside uh, inside these shapes. And um, yeah, totally that, I think that would totally work if you do something similar, like in the center one, just using these same colors. Um, but otherwise I think you did a great job and looks like you had so much fun experimenting and uh, you know, picking the colors and putting them together and um, yeah, finding these different compositions. Also the presentation is great, how you kind of have these three options on the right side and the left one being kind of like a mock-up showing, um, you know, showing an application of those shapes and colors. Mechi, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is a great um, activity for color exploration. And actually, you know, when you have uh, a yellow or um, orange or red, it's nice to see them in combination with other tones because that's, that's how color palettes works. And I think uh, what you did here is great. So yeah, I will, I encourage you to keep doing this uh, exercise for the rest of your projects because uh, it's actually a very helpful thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Oops, why doesn't it work? Okay, um, Lucy, great job. Thanks so much for submitting. And now we have next up Anthony with Space Chaos. I think um, this almost looks like a book cover to me. Um, I think you did a great job kind of creating this background with, um, you know, gradients in it and little like um, spotty kind of color application. And um, I, I would leave a little bit more space around around the uh, title of the book just because you don't want to have this see too much on you know, on the edge. Um, in production, you also have to consider that, you know, the edges might be cut off unexpectedly. So make sure to uh, keep it a little bit more um, in the center. And also, I feel like you could uh, decrease the kerning a little bit in the chaos word um, so that it matches the space word because uh, the space word um, is has a pretty tight kerning and here kerning is pretty, um, you know, pretty high. So the letters are further apart and um, otherwise, I like, I like the colors that you chose. Maybe you can uh, simplify it a little bit using just one color for, um, let's say you only use blues or only use yellows and oranges for uh, the title that will be, I think, uh, improving the legibility and improving the feeling that these words belong together because it's supposed to be read together, right? Space chaos, I think that's the title. So, um, yeah, but otherwise, I think you did a great job. Uh, I'm wondering if this line here in between um, can be a little bit disturbing to uh, for the legibility. 
um, but I think in this case it kind of works because uh, you can you can already see the letters the letters are pretty well legible actually so but it, in some letters it might be a little bit um, you know disturbing in this case it works okay uh, Mechi what do you think I will just plus one everything you said I think taking into account if this is going to be a uh cover of a book, then you should definitely need to uh, take into account the, like, where the falls, because when it falls, you know, it's going to eat a little bit and you don't want anything important there. Um, and just, I will, I will personally remove the black line there because it's providing to like a quite a distraction to me, but no, I really like the colors and I, I love the gradients of the background that is like showing you something, but no, I wonder what it is. Yeah, it's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, awesome. Great work, Anthony. And I believe Anthony was also in the chat. So um, thanks for joining us today again. Cool. And we have Divine Rose with Innocent Rose. New York Times bestseller. I think this typeface is so perfect for uh, for this um, subtitle that you have here, New York Times. Um, I believe that some of the magazines also use this typeface a lot, and I might it might even be the New York Times some of the their original typefaces. Mechi, do you know about that? Mm -hmm. It looks like, but mm -hmm. I wonder. I really like okay. it. Very subtle, everything. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I also think that this typeface that you chose for innocent rose look, uh, looks really, really nice. It works really well, and the way you kind of uh, added the rose to the end, I think, is you did a really, really great job. And uh, the little petals that are kind of falling down, um, I think you just did a great job. I would love to see it as a mock-up. So if you maybe can find a Photoshop uh, mock-up and uh, put this as a cover. That would be really interesting to see. I think a little bit of texture in this uh, white space could be also really interesting to kind of make it a little bit more exciting um, in this whole simplicity of it, right? Mechi, what do you think? I I like it. I would like, a, well, it's very like feminine and fragile, very, very like refined and elegant. Uh, I would like to see like the title being centered and then um, I will probably remove a couple of of, uh, of the petals because they are creating a weird uh, no, it's not weird. It's that they are creating a negative space, and my eyes are driven to that negative space. So maybe you can just delete probably three or four of them, and the message will still be there, and mm -hmm. you have a more uh, balanced composition. But I think is the touch of the rose in the end. I think is great. Yeah, and um, also to kind of avoid this negative space to happen, you can spread them apart a little bit more, or as Mechi is saying, just remove a couple of them and kind of spread them out just a little bit. Um, otherwise, I think you did a really great job. Also, the layout is awesome. You are so good at it, and, um, and the spacing is is really great. I love that you left enough space on the left and the right side, and also this framing here. Um, really brings a good touch and reusing this color. I think you did an awesome job. Divine Rose, great job. All right, so next one up is Zero Miles to Empty. Um, little uh, description here, my first daily challenge, fun exercise, topography has always been my weakest part of design. Wish I'd know this Discord was here sooner. Yeah, I think it's the Discord channel is really a great resource to kind of keep on learning from each other. Um, and I think you did a great job here. Uh, I don't know why typography has been uh, your um, weakest, uh, has been your weakness. Um, I don't see it here. It almost looks like you have created your own typeface here, which is already really awesome. I like the typeface that you have picked here. I think it works really well for a book cover. I have seen this typeface very often on book covers before. And I like how you're reusing it here, City of Slaughter. I might um, make it a little bit larger so that there is a little better hierarchy so that um, 
your eyes more drawn to City of Slaughter because this is the, the title, right, of the book. So it should be the first thing that you read. Uh, at the moment, a criminal comedy written and so on is the first thing that I read. So maybe make that a little bit smaller and then increase the size of City of. And I think the rest is really awesome. You did a great job with the graphics here. I love how um, kind of this uh, these blood splashes go into the city um, a skyline and those lines really guide your eye really well. And um, maybe I would place a little white background be behind the buildings so that the lines are not visible once they kind of reach the building, right? Uh, right now it looks like, um, I would say, I would say it would improve the, you know, uh, the visual aspect of it. I see you did that already in some of the parts, um, but not in all of them. So I would definitely work on that a little bit. Otherwise, I think you did a really amazing job with, uh, with the whole arrangement of the words and the graphics. And I think you just did a great job. Just uh, one little, um, you know, added to uh, make this top part a little bit smaller and city off a little bit larger. And then you're good to go, I would say. Machi, what do you think? I love the wordplay of slaughter and lather. It's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a criminal comedy, so I think it's it's great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel it's uh, it's really it's really great. Like I think the balance is working. Um, I would probably this is very personal, but maybe I would just uh, add some blood, but maybe not that much. Um, but that's very personal overall i think it's great like really great good job awesome yay thank you so much zero miles to empty for your submission and next one up we have uh and with snows of nebula by Piers mcginty i really love the typeface here at the bottom it's a very minimalistic one um i would maybe I will maybe play a little bit around more with Snows of Nebula so it has a better contrast. Uh, right now, I would say Piers McGinty is uh, better legible uh, than Snows Off, for example. So maybe if you can uh, decrease the transparency here or play around in different ways to kind of create better legibility. Also, these little pieces of the letters that are kind of touching with the surface and creating this little um very bright lines at the bottom of the letters i would avoid that so i would just push a snows off a couple of pixels uh, pixels to the top and otherwise i think you did a great job with the texture here with this brush that you have used to kind of create this connection from the sky to this um i'm not sure is it a planet or something like that um, and I love the colors that you have used. I'm wondering if there is a way to kind of reuse one of these colors that you've used at the top here at the bottom as well. I'm thinking specifically of this green or this turquoise, maybe that can be a thing to um, add to this gradient here at the bottom. Otherwise, um, I think you did a really amazing job. Mechi, what do you think? I like uh, the, also the play of the little gradient on snows off because it kind of looked like snow. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how the, I love the colors, the color palette that to me is uh, working really good. Uh, mm -hmm. The stars look like they are light up, which is so great. Maybe I will just remove the, the white rectangle and see how that works, because it seems mm -hmm. like there are some like shapes in kind of being trees or mountains. And I think that's enough uh, contrast if you put like a, white text over it i think it would be cool uh, mm -hmm. but yeah no i think it's a great and yes i good job there here too great awesome and really really good job and next one up we have cjs8961 <laughs> um and i love this mock-up thank you so much for mocking this up it makes it so much easier to kind of understand how your cover will look like on a real book and it, it is very minimalistic and i see you have played with uh, shades of like this grayish color and having a gradient to the bottom kind of fading it out and it's really really subtle and that's the reason why i love it because um it's just so subtle you literally have to take a close look to be able to see that 
I also love the typeface combination that you have here. You have the serif that goes into a, um, an italic version and then it goes into a sans serif that looks very minimalistic and edgy. Um, and then you're reusing that um, uh, that italic serif typeface at the bottom, which is a really great way to kind of use it for, you know, the title and the, um, the author name. Yeah, I think you did a great job. Also, the feeling of smoke kind of really, really, uh, um, you know, is very well trans transmitted. I really feel like um, this grayness and um, darkness of smoke and also how it goes into this gradient that almost melts with the background. Um, I think you did a really amazing job here. I'll maybe fade out this uh, line that kind of um, develops here inside the gradient uh, of the word smoke to kind of, you know, blend it in just a little bit better. But otherwise, I think you did a really amazing job and also love, love the way you designed the side. Uh, it looks really amazing, very professional. What do you think, Mechi? I love it. I it's so important to how like to understand how uh, mockups help uh, to create more I don't know like more tangible objects at least to the to the site and I think it bumps up the final product a lot. Um, it's very subtle. Uh, it's the, I think the play with the negative space in the in the in the part of the top is is great. Um, and everything you said, Julia, was on point too. So yeah, no, amazing, Very right? Very nice. Good job there too. <laughs> Awesome. CJS, you did a really amazing job, guys. If you want to still submit your daily creative challenge, feel free to go on to be.net slash challenge slash illustrator and uh, make sure to submit your challenges still. We have some amazing moderators that will give you the feedback. So um, let's jump uh, for another couple minutes to Mechi's uh, computer and let's finalize some final, um, you know, design tweaks and yeah. We only have, I think, like six minutes left. So, Mechi, In these six minutes are all for you to kind of sum up things and... Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, time has gone very fast. Yeah, that's so true, That's right? the only it's... thing I'm going to say. It went by so fast and I cannot even believe it. But yeah. so, to get, so together in yesterday and today, we finalized putting together a brochure. Um, which starts with a cover and quickly we're going to finish doing the cover, the back, back cover. Um, we put a little schedule together. We did some illustrations and cool poster like Cherry. Thanks for the inspiration there. Um, some ramen with some 3D shapes and some like a more editorial focus spread. And now we are going to finish the, the, brochure with a phrase that was no with a phrase that was said in the in the channel which i really like and i just remember that yay yeah i think that's a really good finalizing uh phrase for the for the um for the back is it the back cover then or is it this oh, is, is like the last page? okay yeah this is the last page and yeah oh my god the last page oh no oh, it's happening <laughs> yeah. yeah but it's cool it will be also nice to quickly see how um how you're going to export this file so whenever yeah. you're done yeah so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna quickly do this natasha is saying this brochure turned out awesome yeah uh, totally cool. thank you very much yeah let's use these shapes just to explain Cool. And I'm going to show you really quick. Well, if you put more time in it, it will be better. But uh, yeah, just That's awesome. Now, I think it's already looking amazing. I mean, you were just on it for like a minute. <laughs> you didn't even do much and it already looks amazing. So let's do a quick bye bye here. And and then we will be finished. Um, so to export this, uh, two important tips, um, probably the most important is uh, package. This means that this will package the whole thing, including uh, 
links, uh, images, and typefaces, which is great. And the idea thing is that you don't have any IRG pictures, but here I have one, but just assume that I don't have any. Um, let's package this, you have to save it. And then in my Adobe, well, let's go and create a folder that's gonna, for sure, and it's gonna package everything. And this is literally what you have to send to the, to the printer is, as you can see, the working file, a PDF, uh, the fonts, which is very useful, and then the links. And then you... It's compare. awesome how it also embeds the illustrations in Illustrator files so that you can actually, you know, the, the printer can also go in and, and see the colors and, you know, double check things, whatever they need to do. Exactly. So, awesome. Um, so... And then the other thing uh, is to uh, print booklet. This, if you are, if you're at home, do you have um, a printer and you want to check it out? This, what it does is creates a booklet for you. So if you can see, the pages are not one, two, three, four, five. If not, are like booklets, you know, like let's say they're like this. So I imagine it is very, very similar. So the, the, okay. the files are, the pages are like this, right? Yeah. So this will be with this, but they are two different. Yeah. yeah. You get it. Yeah. So that will actually compaginate everything. Uh, the, the machine will do it for you. So that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Yeah, I think that's a really great tip if you have like a double paged um, printing and then, and then you want to basically um, connect it through the middle, right? Yes, and this is for saddle stitch, uh, which is, or like, um, yeah, like ping ping here. Ping ping. <laughs> like a brochure, because if it's a festival and they're creating a lot of, of them, this is the cheapest version, the option, so. Oh, that's good to know too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Cool, uh, yeah, that's awesome. So, um, so one is package the file. The second one is you can print brochure. If you go into file print brochure and that will create that page arrangement for, um, you know, for when you're printing double pages and you want to put them together in kind of like a booklet like that. Exactly. So yeah. Wow, Mechi, uh, this has been so amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all of your insights. Thanks everyone for the amazing questions and compliments in the chat. It was really, really great to have you guys here. We all know that you guys are all from different time zones and we appreciate you tuning in. I know sometimes it can be really late. Um, if you want to watch the replay, if you haven't yet uh, seen the uh, replay from yesterday, check it out. Also stay tuned for the next streams. Maybe, maybe we can take a quick look at the schedule um that would be awesome so make sure to stay tuned for the next streams i don't think i can see it right now but that's okay you guys can see it <laughs> and uh, make sure to stay tuned for the next streams and um yeah we are done with this and mechi any couple uh, last words um no just have fun and enjoy these crazy times and do whatever makes you happy <laughs> yay Thank you so much, guys, and we'll see you next time. Stay tuned for the next stream. Yes. Bye.